Quave software runs on the Android operating system, and it's a good choice for digital cave survey with the Disto X2 survey measurement device. Quave is designed to capture survey measurements while underground and enables plan, profile, and cross-section sketching. The software is free and ad-free. It can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. I'm running it on a Samsung Note 5 phone, which has a Wacom-style active digitizer built into the screen. There are a number of devices that are suitable for Cave Survey with Android using Quave. And for more information, you can watch my other video on an overview of Cave Survey using Android devices. And I'll put a link to that into the, in the description below. From the main menu, you'll see a list of existing Cave Surveys unassigned surveys, a button for creating a new cave survey, and a settings button. From the settings menu, it's possible to make adjustments to how survey measurement data is managed and displayed, and the scale that should be used when exporting digital sketches. Back in the main menu, a new cave survey can be started by tapping the orange button in the bottom right hand corner. In the new cave survey menu that it pops up, you can enter information including cave name, region, short description, and precise location information. And position information can be in latitude or longitude, as well as UTM coordinates. If your device has built-in GPS, then you can use the small location icon near the top of the page to automatically use your current location. You can also add a photo of the cave by tapping on the camera button and selecting an image file. In the main menu is a selection for unassigned surveys. It's possible to simply start collecting data without assigning it to a specific cave, but this can be edited later. Those surveys will be identified by the date, but can also include team members and a short description. From the main menu, selecting a specific cave will reveal previously entered information about that cave in a list of surveys. There's an options or menu button at the top right corner, that's the three dots, and it can be used to delete the cave or edit information about the cave. So this will take you back to the same menu when you created the cave. Uh, it's got the name, description, location, uh, as well as uh, being able to edit the photo. On the cave menu there's also a map icon near the top here and that'll open Google Maps and show you the cave's location as long as you have internet connectivity. Below the general cave information will be a chronological list of surveys with the most recent at the top. You can tap on any of these surveys to either edit them or add additional survey data. There's also an orange plus button in the bottom right corner for adding a new survey. Basic information for each survey includes the date, team members, and a description. The description field can be used for a variety of needs including explaining what the objective of the survey is as well as including information like instrument calibration data. Once you select a specific survey, the first thing you'll see is a list of survey shots. There are actually four tabs here. Uh, the first tab on the left is the survey data page. Then there's a plan view sketch page. There's a projected profile. So this is just a projected profile view line plot, but there's no sketch that goes on this page. And then the fourth tab here is the extended profile sketch page. Other options available on the survey screen are a button here for connecting to a Disto X through Bluetooth and downloading data. Uh, there's a plus button here that's for manually entering survey data. And then on the upper right hand side you have an options menu. Some of this is for manipulating the file and there's also uh, you can get back into the settings menu and then you can also use this menu to export data. So I'll show you a little bit about how these buttons function um, and then get into some of the details. If you, have a, if you have a survey shot collected and you tap on the Bluetooth button, it'll ask you to select the device. Uh, this one is uh, serial number 3219. So if you haven't already paired uh, your Disto X with uh, the Android device, it might ask you to pair. Um, if it's already paired, it'll show up as an available device. You can tap on it. Uh, Oftentimes it asks you to re-enter the pin. Um, the default, if it does ask you for a pin, is 0000. 
and then once it's connected this will turn green and you'll see the Bluetooth icon on the Disto X flashing and data will be downloaded. If you're using uh, analog instruments like uh, Suntus, you can use this plus button and you can use that to add uh, data manually so you can add the distance, azimuth, and inclination. Uh, you can also go into survey shots and add the left, right, up, and down data. One thing to be aware of is the Quave software only supports metric units at this time. So even if your Disto X is in imperial units, like the distance here is 11.2 feet, that last shot was uh, imported in uh, meters. So it shows here the distance is 3.42. So if you do the conversion, that's, that's the distance in meters. Uh, you can see that the azimuth and the inclination are uh, in the same uh, degree, units of degrees. But uh, um, by default, the sketch page has a, a grid pattern, uh, and the reference unit is in meters. So everything in the software is in metric units. So back on this main data tab, you'll see a list of survey shots with the from and to stations. And you'll see below that the survey data distance, azimuth, and inclination. Now for some of these, you'll see an arrow on the right. And so there's additional data here that's uh, not necessarily survey shots. If you tap on the arrow, it'll expand uh, the individual shots. And so uh, many of these are splay shots. So they have a from station, which will be in this case A2, uh, but they go to a wall or something rather than to another survey station. So it'll show the individual splay shots under here. And then if you scroll down, the last three measurements here are repeat shots, so those, when you have three shots that are within a certain tolerance, that indicates to both the Disto X and to the software, the Quave software, that that's a survey shot, not a splay shot. So you see the distances, they're not exactly the same, but they're within a fairly close tolerance. Same thing with azimuth and inclination. And then that gets registered here as the next survey shot. So when it sees three in a row that are similar, it identifies that as a survey shot. If, it, if, uh, if it's not a survey shot and they are display shots, you can go in and manually change that, but um, the software is set up to recognize three repeat measurements as a shot instead of a display. Any one of these measurements, if you tap and hold, uh, you get some, a menu comes up and you have some options. Um, you can move splays, uh, you can edit the shot, uh, go in and change uh, values, you can add left, right, up, and down data for it, and you can also go in and delete a shot if you need to. So from the main list of survey shots, you'll see uh, most of these are gray. Uh, the, the last station, A7, is a green dot. That means that's the active station. And all that means is that as new data is downloaded, it'll use A7 as the from station. So um, any new survey data will be attached to that station. If you want to change the active station, if you've uh, done a survey down to A7 and that's a dead end, and then you go back to, say, A3, and you're going to do a side, a side passage survey off of A3. If you tap and hold, you can come down and um, set as active, start here, and that'll change that to a green dot. So now any new survey data will be attached to station A3. You can also tap these other stations, and they'll turn uh, they'll, one at a time, they'll turn red. And red means it's not the active station, but it's sort of the selected station. And that can be useful if you want to do sketch around that station or you want to, say, add a cross-section. That becomes the center point in the sketch. So in this case, we selected station A5 as uh, our uh, selected station. If we go to the sketch and we hit this uh, target thing, it'll center, and it'll center on station A5. So if we're looking for a particular station in any of the sketches, and that can be profile as well, Again, if we hit the target button, it'll center on station A5. If you want to make changes to a survey shot, you can tap and hold, and again, menu will come up. You can set it as the active station. Uh, you can reverse the direction, so if it was a back sight instead of a front sight, you can change the direction 180 degrees. Uh, you can change if it's set as a survey station and you want it to be a display, you can change that. Um, and again, you can edit the details of that survey shot. So next we'll go to the, the plan view sketch tab and I'll walk you through that. There's some adjustment and drawing buttons down here at the bottom. If those are unselected, you can just 
uh, tap and drag the sketch around. Again, if there's uh, you want to start sketching at a particular station, if uh, you select the latest station and go back here and then hit this target button, that'll recenter on the the last station or the, the selected station, I should say. You can also rotate the sketch. Uh, so there's a three D button here, and then if you drag left and right on the screen, it'll rotate the angle. I prefer not to use this. I prefer to have my sketch with uh, north to the top of the page all the time and uh, keep it in that orientation. I get a little confused if I start rotating things around. Some people prefer to have it rotated so that the survey shot is in the direction that they're facing and it makes it a little easier for them to draw. So if you want to do that, you can use this 3D button and rotate it so that the shot is uh, facing towards the top of the page rather than north being at the top of the page. You have the same access to buttons up here at the top. You have uh, Bluetooth access to your Disto X and then a manual add button. Um, there's a plus and minus here for zooming. So if you want to zoom in, hit the plus, minus to zoom out. You can also pinch to zoom. And as I mentioned before, there's a grid here and it shows you a scale bar up in the upper left hand corner and these are always metric based grids. It gives you some data down here in the bottom left. This is the total survey length and then the total vertical extent of the survey. So the next two icons down at the bottom are for sketching. Uh, there's a pencil icon and a tag icon. So the pencil icon, if we tap on that, it brings up this menu and you have a what lo looks like a pencil in a line that's for drawing lines. There's uh, looks like a paint can that's for doing fill areas. There's an undo and redo button. And then the button on the right is uh, an erase button. Uh, there's also a little circle here that's colored and uh, you can change the color of the line or item that you're drawing. Uh, in most cases I use uh, black as a default, but if you tap, um, there isn't really a palette to choose from. You can choose the kind of color region you want. So if you want water, maybe you go down to the blue and then pick something like that and then you have to tap on that button on the right in order for that to uh, become active. So if you choose the line tool, if you tap and hold that, a menu will come up and there are five different line options. There's a sort of a thick line and a thin line. There's a dashed line and then you have the two uh, ledge symbol tools. So uh, this is for floor ledges and for ceiling ledges. And you can use these, but I'll tell you, I'll get into it a little bit later as to why these are sometimes problematic. As you bring these sketches into uh, cave surveys, cave cartography software like Adobe Illustrator, it doesn't very, it doesn't read these symbols very well. So I try to stick with uh, just a line tool. And then if I want to do floor ledges or ceiling ledges, I just draw them manually as you would with a paper sketch. So if you cho choose a line tool like that, you can just draw right on the screen and the software is fairly responsive to uh, uh, pen movement, so it has a fairly high resolution. If you need to move the drawing around while you're in the drawing program, you'll need to hit this back arrow, go back one menu, and then you can drag and, and zoom. So again, if you need to draw a floor ledge, you can just draw that manually or ceiling ledge. And that'll be easier for the software, the drafting software to read later. This uh, pink can icon is for fill areas. If you want to do uh, pools in blue, you can do that. Uh, and then uh, draw the outline of the pool, it'll show up like that. Some people will use this to do things like sediment. Maybe they want brown for to represent sand or silt on the floor. Uh, I find this a little confusing because it's not really a standard um, symbol that's uh, recognized. So, so the person that's sketching, they could create a key if they wanted to. So they want to go back in and draw say fill area do something like this and then so 
something like that so that the cartographer knows what that means. But otherwise, I would recommend just using uh, kind of standard symbology. If we go back here, we can use this erase tool. Uh, we could use the undo tool. Let me show you that real quick. To erase the last several drawing items. Uh, or you can select this erase tool and uh, you can choose the items you want to erase. Say we want to get rid of this line. So it's a fairly simple sketch interface. Th that's the line tools and the fill area tools. If you hit this back arrow and back to this main menu and uh, go to the tags button, there, there are only a couple options here. There's another erase tool here, although if you're going to erase lines, you have to be in the line menu to do that. This is only for erasing the symbols and uh, text that you might enter uh, under the tags menu. So the circle with the T is for adding a text label. So you can select that and then tap on the screen and then it'll pop up the keyboard and you can uh, type in whatever you like. Uh, it'll put that there as a label. Uh, you can handwrite as well back in the pencil tool if you just choose pencil. Maybe I want the thinner line. I can uh, just write in here lead, you know, six high by four wide or whatever it might be. So you can include details just by handwriting, but you can type it in as well uh, through this uh, text tag function here. If I want to erase that, I can do that. Uh, it's a little, it's not that obvious, but there's another button in the middle here. And by default, it's this uh, like parallel line thing. But if you tap on that, that's symbols. If you tap and hold, it brings up a library here. So you have um, a lot of um, sort of traditional symbols. There's uh, roughly 30 different symbols to choose from, uh, but you can choose different speleothems, like stalagmites, and add those to your drawing. In order for these to be recognized in cartography software like Illustrator, you have to install a special font. And I can uh, show you that Spelio UIS font basically recognizes these symbols um, and translates them properly into the survey software. So that works in both Illustrator and in Inkscape. There are a few symbols in here that, uh, so things like stalagmites, stalactites are sort of fixed symbols. There are a few like uh, flowstone here that when you add that, uh, this little window comes up and says, it just says okay over here. And this you can rotate. So if you drag uh, left and right on the screen, it'll rotate that symbol around. So Flowstone does have directionality to it, and uh, you can drag it till it's in the right orientation, then tap OK. If I want to add another one, again, you can rotate it around, tap OK. So there's a few symbols in here that have that directionality. There's another one for water flow, like this. So if we had a stream, Again, we can rotate that until it's pointing in the correct direction and then tap OK. So that's how the symbols work. You can play around with those and decide if you want to use those. Um, but again, so just with the line drawing tool, you can draw these things manually. So if you want to use that uh, symbol for stalagmite, um, if you want to add a halectite in there, you can include those symbols. Now on the plan view sketch page, you can also add cross sections, and there's a couple ways to do this. One is just to manually draw them in, which is sort of what I prefer. Uh, you can use the line tool, and then uh, you have a grid back here for scale. So you can just draw the cross section off to the side as you would with the paper sketch. The other way to do it is um, for a given survey station, if you tap and hold, uh, this box pops up for cross section, and if you tap on that, you get another page that shows up, another sketch page that's specifically for cross sections. And that long tap on the plan view sketch page is the only way to access this. As you can see I've drawn some cross sections for different stations here. Uh, the one advantage of doing it this way is that if you have any splay shots around those stations, those splay shots will show up and could be used as a guideline for a more accurate cross section sketch. And then to go back to the main sketch page, you tap and hold somewhere else on the screen and it'll pop back to the standard plan view sketch.
So we'll move on to the projected profile tab. That's the third tab over. And this is just a line plot. Uh, you can see that the drawing tools are grayed out. You don't have that option. You can do the centering on the active, uh, the selected station, I should say. And you can uh, do rotation from the screen as well. What this will do, if you drag back and forth, it changes the orientation. So you can see on the left and right are the, the angles, uh, the orientation angle. And you can see that the, the projection of that profile line plot changes as you change the angle. Again, I, there's not much use for this, uh, so I don't use it for much of anything. I prefer not to rotate, as I mentioned before. I like to have north at the top of the page. Obviously, with uh, profile views, this is up and down. And then you have west and east. Right now, it's a north-facing projection, which is the default. And I prefer just to leave it like that. But since you can't sketch on this page, and most people don't sketch uh, projected profile views, they do extended profile view sketches, and then uh, make adjustments, morph the sketch to match the projection if they're doing a projected line plot in the finished uh, map. The fourth and final tab on the sketch menu is the extended profile sketch view page. And uh, so these are survey shots that there is no uh, west or east orientation. The shots are just stretched out in a straight line. And uh, you can you have access then to the sketch tools. You can um, use symbols as well as uh, the drawing lines and area fills like you have with the plan view sketch. The default for this extended uh, profile sketch is uh, having the shots go from left to right across the screen. If the passage makes a sharp change in direction, sometimes it's easier to sketch if you reverse the direction on the profile uh, extended profile view. If you want to do that, you can tap and hold on the station and it'll say invert. And now it takes that shot and displays it going back in the other direction. Now to export data or sketches from the survey menu, you can tap on the options button here and click on export. You have a choice of uh, scalable vector graphics or theory and scrap files for the sketches. And when you export an SVG file, it'll generate three SVG files. So there's one for the plan view sketch and the cross sections are overlaid on that. Uh, they're uh, generally exported as a separate layer. You also have the um, projected line plot without any sketch detail. And then you have the extended profile sketch page as a third sketch page that's exported. There's different data formats that you can use. Uh, walls, or it'll create an SRV file. It's a text format file. Uh, Compass uh, DAT is also a text format file. And then I'm not as familiar with Cervex or Therian, but there are also data formats for desktop data management applications. And so uh, you can export uh, the data in those formats. So after you've exported your sketch or data files from Quave, you can save them onto a folder on your Android device. And then to get them from your Android device to a PC, you can use a micro SD if your Android device has an SD card reader, or you can use uh, email, or you can transfer wirelessly with something like Bluetooth. But the idea is once you get the uh, data files and sketch files into a PC, then you can manipulate them. And there's a couple tricks and things to keep in mind as you do that. So I created a folder here for the SVG files. Quave will generate three files. There's uh, one that's labeled extended. That's the extended profile sketches, uh, which are previewed here. Uh, the next one is um, has a suffix of plan. That's your plan view sketch. And it also contains uh, cross sections. And then the one that's a section is actually the projected profile view line plot. You can open these SVG files in either uh, Adobe Illustrator or a free software like Inkscape uh, and manipulate the surveys, the sketches there. Now I've installed on this computer uh, a font that's available on the internet. I'll put a link to that font in the description below, but it's a Spelio UIS font. And what that does is it takes the symbol libraries that are in uh, Quave and it translates them for um, for the computer. So these symbols like for soda straws, crystals, stalactites, stalagmites, um, they're basically keyboard functions and then for the software to be able to translate them into the proper um, symbols you need that font installed. 
Um, otherwise, they just show up as like backslashes or forward slashes, uh, different keystrokes, uh, and it's hard to tell what's going on. The font will also interpret some of the line symbols. So, so here you can see where ledge symbol was used, a floor ledge, and uh, the font will translate that into the proper floor ledge. Um, but here, this uh, circle here is actually a ceiling ledge, like a dome symbol, and that didn't get translated very well. So again, what I prefer to do with ledges, uh, floor ledges and ceiling ledges both, is just to hand draw them. So here's an example in blue where I've drawn a, a floor ledge and then here's a ceiling ledge over here. These will always translate. You don't need to use a font. So that's my preference is to, to draw in the Quave software just to hand draw those things, to hand draw things like slope symbols and rock symbols um, as you would on paper and not worry about the, the Spelio UIS font translation. So you can also open these uh, SVG files in a program like Illustrator. In Illustrator, you'll have uh, different layers, and so you can go in and choose. Uh, there'll be layers. That's the layer for the cross sections. That's a layer for the station names. Uh, I think that's the station labels. That's the line plot itself, the vectors. Those are the drawing elements. So anyway, you can uh, choose things in different layers if you'd like. But generally what I do when I bring in sketches into Illustrator is I don't try to use the drawing elements that I uh, used in the cave. I'll sort of trace or redraw these onto the finished map. Uh, walls will export as an SRV file, which is just a survey file. So here's the SRV file, survey file. It's basically a text format file, but it's got the date of the survey, survey team, and then you've got survey shots as well as splay shots. So the main difference is the splay shots have a from station, but there's no to station. The to station is left empty, and uh, the software handles that reasonably well. So you don't have to do a whole lot of manipulation of the data in order to incorporate this into um, a project file. Now, Quave will also export data in uh, Compass format as a DAT file. So you can navigate to that and open it. And I've found that there's a number of issues with the uh, formatting of this data. So what happens with the survey shots is Quave exports splay shots, and it's not allowed in Compass to have the two station empty. And so what Quave does is it adds a two station for the splays. But for every splay, it gives it the same two station. So what that does, in effect, is create a bunch of bad loops. Even if it's length excluded, which is sort of in there by default, uh, the software can't really tell the difference since all of the splay shots go to this station A0 and then lowercase a. It might work if you said A, B, C, and D, but um, Compass just isn't set up to handle splay shots uh, effectively. So. The best thing to do is to go into use a notepad or text editor and go in and just delete the splay shots uh, and then bring it into Compass and work with it. Um, so that's what I'd recommend. Get rid of all the splays. Anything with the length excluded here is a splay. Uh, get rid of that data before you start working with it in Compass.